like to share with you um, how the piece that I just uploaded came to be and uh, some of the compositional elements that I included in it. First, a little background. It's called Dance of the Clown, and I uploaded it a couple of days ago. It's an original piece. It's available on Sheet Music Plus. If you should happen to want to play it yourself, you can download it there. And maybe if you are interested, you might like to do that and then come back and watch this video. And you might find some helpful hints. Um, the other thing is just so I could uh, wanted to let you know some of the elements that I included in it. So um, here's the background. I started, uh, I didn't start out to write a piece. I started out to write an exercise. Um, as a classical teacher of many years and player who's always been interested in jazz and has been studying it more seriously in the last 12 years or so, um, I'm always looking for ways to bridge that gap between classical and jazz. And also to maybe help other teachers, other pianists who are a little afraid of improvising, to start to know that language a little bit and see the similarities of them and maybe step out a little bit. So here goes. When I first started doing this, I was writing an exercise and I did an exercise, um, it's one of my uploads in my tutorials called the Jazz Habanera. And that was what this piece was gonna be entitled, but more on that later. So basically the idea was to play this habanera rhythm from, uh, the, uh, from Carmen. It's just a Latin rhythm. And play this scale over it. Which is the altered dominant scale. It's played over a 5-7 chord. So if I played an E7 chord in my left hand, and in the right hand, I started playing an E, or playing an E, went up a half step, and now I played an F melodic minor scale. If you want to see the details, you can look at the other video, but I kind of run quickly through it. And then I uh, stop on the E, go back down. Um, in this piece, Dance of the Clown, to make it rhythmically turn out. Go back to there. But first, I was just writing an exercise to take that altered dominant scale through different keys, just with that rhythm. And as I played with it more, this piece just kind of emerged. And then I started finding ways to use other modes. So, um, and that can certainly happen if you uh, play a jazz exercise or any kind of exercise where you are improvising because the composers They didn't just sit down and go. I'm going to write a piece Some of them maybe did but a, a lot of times they were improvising first And then they came up with these ideas and then they wrote them down So there's no reason that you couldn't do the same if you were improvising on an idea anyway, that's what happens to me a lot and so um, first it was gonna not be called dance of the clown but it was going to be called the Jazz Habanera. But anyway, um, let me just talk to you a little bit about this. Um, it's, um, at the end of the piece, I uh, have written, this piece is an exploration of several classical and jazz modes. Altered dominant, mixolydian, melodic minor, major, and bebop major. And I actually left off a few, which I've now added, and I will go back and add again, but you can write those, these down if you'd like. The symmetrical dominant, also in classical terms known as the octatonic scale. It's also sometimes called the diminished scale, meaning uh, but it, it starts with the half step and alternates half and whole steps. Uh, the bebop mixolydian, and the Aeolian dominant, which is uh, like a, another word, another term for it is the mixolydian with a flat six. Now that might be a little overwhelming, but let me just take you through the sound of each one of these and how I use them so you can see that really uh, there are a lot of similarities between these scales that are used, um, they are used a lot in the Romantic era. Um, and certainly in the classical era, era too, but a lot in the Romantic era, and then, uh, and then a lot in jazz. 
So I will just talk you through the piece. It's, um, one of the things is that it starts out in A minor, but it's always playing with going back and forth between A minor and A major. And then in the middle section, it moves uh, to F, which is the sixth step of the A, A minor scale. And so more on that later. So the alter dominant I just talked about. <laughs> comes back down. So, um, and then it goes to a symmetrical dominant scale. Very similar. It's another scale that's played over a dominant chord. But like I said, it's sometimes called diminished scale. It starts starting on E, then you go up a half, up a whole, a half, up a whole, a half, a whole, then a half, and, it's, and then you're back in major, so. Like that. And then, uh, then I've just got a little cadence. Uh, and then it's going to turn back towards minor. And then you're back to that altered dominant. Instead of staying on the altered dominant, we go to the major side of things, and here is the scale. So, the Mixolydian scale, um, it's a mode off the major scale. It's based on the fifth step of a major scale. So if I'm in the key of A, and I have three sharps in my key signature, and I go to the fifth step, come to E, that's my mix, mixolydian scale. And it looks like you're playing a major scale with a lowered seventh. Basically, it's played over the 5 7 chord and then it resolves back to one. So, uh, let's see. But this time it's just the ascending scale. Now, on this part, we have a, really a diminished scale, but it starts with a whole step. So it's not called the uh, symmetrical dominant here. So I've got a D sharp, diminished seven. Okay. Starting with a D sharp in the right hand, now I'm gonna alternate half, whole step first because it's a diminished. If it were a dominant seventh chord, you would start with a half step. But if it's a diminished seven, start with the whole step, okay? Okay, so I don't go all the way up, but... And then I end up on um, a major scale. A major with an E on the bottom. And then uh, E mixolydian, but it's a bebop mixolydian. That's another curveball here. That would be E mixolydian, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D, E. And then I put a little half step between the D and the E, D, D sharp, E. Like that. So I've got. Coming to the middle section, I'm jumping to F, which is up, up a sixth, F. Okay, there are a lot of things I could talk about here. Uh, by going to F, usually when you go to a different key, you would go up a fifth, but by going up a sixth, a minor sixth, that's going to lead us back down to A. Um, it's just a substitute for uh, F, but it's also called a tritone substitution for B. And so that sort of, it, it ties it together to A. Okay, so anyway, we start in F. It's very uh, typical so far in a romantic style. 
scale. Now I'm going to switch back to A major with a cadence. seven in the key of A. So now if I five in the key of A, now back to A minor. And then I'll throw in this little back to the altered dominant. Here's another altered dominant. five chord again. Now instead of doing uh, the five of that, which is B7, I substitute F, F7, which is uh, the tritone substitution. It's uh, a tritone away or three whole steps away. There is, I do have a video on that if you're interested. Okay, so. And back to five. So the whole key area of the middle is in F, which is suggesting this one chord, which is going to tie it all together and creates a little bit of interest. It makes it very kind of sneaky. And let me find where I am. Chromatic scale there in opposite directions. Now I'm in Mixolydian mode in the key of A. And then I have this little quote here. Um, that should be... No, no, it's minor. It's here. So it's in the wrong key. It's in minor instead of major. So it's kind of just an attempt to create some humor. And then you hear that little quote that you hear at Barnum and Bailey's Circus. back to Mixolydian. There's that diminished scale again. And then to the end, just big. Now I do this little dance-like uh, section in the coda where I'm alternating between A major and F major. Those are the two keys that I was playing in. And then one and four and minor, oh no, major. Major and minor four. Here's the bebop major scale. So bebop major would be uh, putting a half step between five and six. Okay, now that's a whole lot of uh, material to take in, but uh, those are the kind of the ideas I was playing with. But on a performance level and just on an artistic level, um, if you, uh, those are the elements that I use to try to create surprise and uh, make the piece fun and playful. So my approach to this piece is one of not being in a hurry save the big stuff for the end. It's what I like to do when I'm playing it. Um, really, it's meant to be flexible. Um, like I said, it started out it was going to be sort of a tango-like piece. Then I started feeling like it sounded more like a clown piece and having humorous elements to it. Um, and I, I toyed with the idea of uh, making it a piece about a clown. And then I... Um, then was aware of the sad news that Tim Conway, the great, great comic actor who was famous for his uh, all the wonderful characters he played on Carol Burnett, 
The Carol Burnett Show, which was one of my favorite shows growing up in my family's, and I still like to watch the clips from it. Uh, but he he was so physically funny. He would he would move in slow motion. He would do these surprising things, um, and it just reminded me of a clown. But he was brilliant and graceful, and um, so I sort of have him pictured in my mind when I'm playing this. You can picture any kind of clown that you want if you're not familiar with him, uh, but that's how I came upon the title. So um, I like to take my time, and I've tried to put in, um, in you know, suggestions for tempo changes, um, and you can certainly have fun with it and find your own flexibility with it. But the main thing is to not be in a hurry and really try to bring out that element of surprise. So for instance, um, when I get, I won't play through the whole piece again, but um, so the first part, uh, kind of straight. And then, um, Changes to major. Move it forward. And then you finish that first section. And then maybe for the second part, it's just very elegant and graceful. Uh, use your pedal, but it can be very free flowing. I like to loop, move it forward and sort of feel it in one. Like. very pliable. And I take my time coming back into it. And this is the part I have the most fun with. Still keep it moving. So you can't use the same fingering you would on a major scale, which is a combination of threes and four. It's four plus four. But if you're starting this scale, what I do is I play this first chord. Then you can use your pedal if you want. Then I move over and it's a contrary motion scale. So then you're gonna play two, three, four. Then you go under. One, two, three, four. And then you go under again. One, You know, when I started doing it, I wanted to, um, I had to memorize the fingerings to all these scales when I was taking um, the courses on it, um, and the jazz courses, um, but um, in college. But I, this one, I had to really practice because it's a little awkward, but I finally got it. So you can too. So we're going to do this. Try that. There is an alternate fingering you can do right there. If you find that too difficult, there's another one I can show you, and you might just put it in the comments if you have that question. Um, okay, well, that's all I have on that. Uh, I hope maybe you might consider picking up a copy and trying it out. Um, enjoy it. 
Um, and uh, have a great day, and I'll see you uh, at the next tutorial.